Example two, find the rectangular equation for the plane curve that was given to us in example one. This is the same thing we just saw in example one. So when they say rectangular, what do they mean? They want x and y. Okay. They want an xy equation. They don't want the parametric representation with t's in it. They want just x and y. And so what we're going to do is we're going to um, pick one equation and solve for t or isolate t. Okay. Pick one of the two equations, isolate t, and plug that in the other. the other equation. That's what we're going to do. So you would have your choice, I suppose, of whether you want to isolate t in this one or t in this one. And it doesn't totally matter. You're going to want to try to pick the one that you think is going to be easier. Okay. I think the one on the right is going to be easier. I think this one. So let's isolate t. I'm going to subtract that 3 over. 2t equals y minus 3. Divide by 2, t is going to equal y minus 3 over 2. We're going to take that and plug that into the other equation. So take this and put it in for t in that other equation. We would have x equals that stuff squared, y minus 3 over 2 squared. Okay? Now remember what the goal was. We want a rectangular equation, so we want x and y, and that's what we've got right there. We have a rectangular equation. Now, does anybody, anybody know what that looks like? Anybody know what shape that makes? We well, should, because we just drew it in example one. Remember when we drew it in example one, it was that sideways parabola, okay? The parametric representation we plugged in, we got that sideways parabola. That's what this is in rectangular form as a sideways parabola. Maybe you would remember. Remember back in algebra class when you had something that looked like y equals x squared? We knew that was a parabola, okay? And then later, maybe in algebra two, you saw x equals y squared was a sideways parabola, okay? That's kind of what we have right now. We've got an x, we've got a y squared. That's a sideways parabola, okay? But, you know, maybe we want to clean this up. Sometimes, Sometimes we want it in a more standardized form. And so take the part on the right, and we can square the two on the bottom. Maybe we'd rather look at it as x equals y minus 3 squared over 4. Or sometimes, you know, maybe we should multiply both sides by 4. We would have 4x equals y minus 3 squared. Or, you know, if you really want to go all out, putting it in vertex form, it's pretty easy to see the vertex of this parabola is going to be the point zero 0,3. We can see the vertex of this parabola right now is the point zero 0,3. So here's your equation. Any, any one of these will work. Let's, let's leave it right here. Okay, here's your equation. Um, but one thing that we really have to do is we have to account for this interval. When we look at the parabola, the sideways parabola, we notice that it doesn't continue on forever. Okay, it stops. It stops right here, and it stops because of that interval. If that interval had extended, then the, the graph would have extended further, but, um, but it stops. It stops, and if you look at the x-axis, it stops at 9. This graph goes from x equals 0 to x equals 9 and stops. So we want to pay attention to that. And really, we have to make a note of that in our answer and say for x in the interval from 0 to 9. If we don't say that... Okay, if we don't add that extra little interval on there, then there's nothing that stops this sideways parabola from <coughs> continuing on indefinitely forever and ever and ever. Okay, we have a parabola that stops at 9. 
we have a parabola that stops at nine, and so we need that extra saying to ensure that it stops where it needs to stop. Why does it stop at nine? Well, it stopped at nine because our interval, our original interval from negative three to three, made that happen. 